Jean Antoinette Poisson, is better known in history as Marquis de Pompadour. According to the legend, when Jeanne was a little girl, her mother took her to a fortune teller, who told her that one day she will reign over the heart of a king. The illegitimate daughter, of a financier, exiled for fraud, little Jeanne was groomed from childhood, to become a plaything for the king. She more than fulfilled her destiny, becoming not only acknowledged mistress but one of the most powerful women in 18th century France. Today in our new series Power Behind the Throne we will examine who was the real Madame de Pompadour, and how did she become one of the most powerful women in France. But before we begin make sure to subscribe to the Fun Facts History and ring the bell to be notified for new historical video every week. Now let's begin. When Louis XV, King of France, first had the opportunity to talk to the young Jeanne, she was dressed as a Diana the Huntress, and he was dressed as a tree. It was 1745, and Jeanne Antoinette Poisson, the future Marquise de Pompadour, had been invited to a masked ball at Versailles. And if this sounds like a chance meeting, it wasn't, her family had been planning to orchestrate this very moment for years. Though her parents were not of the noble class, Jeanne Antoinette was raised to be the wife of a wealthy man. She was extremely talented and could act, dance, sing, and play the clavichord. Her marriage brought her out into society and she became well known as a star of the Paris salons. According to Voltaire she was well brought up, amiable, good, charming and talented. Now, let's look back how two different worlds clashed. Due to her involvement in Paris salons as well as her grace and beauty, Louis XV had heard the name of Jeanne Antoinette mentioned at court as early as 1742. However, it wasn't until 1744, when Jeanne Antoinette sought to catch the eye of the king while he led the hunt in the forest of Sennet. Since she occupied an estate near this location she was allowed to follow the royal party at a distance. Wanting to attract the king's attention, Jeanne drove directly in front of the king's path, once in a pink phaeton, wearing a blue dress, and once in a blue phaeton, wearing a pink dress. And this obviously worked, since the king sent a gift of venison to her, and not too long afterward she was invited to the mask ball of 1745. It was at this ball that the king, disguised along with seven courtiers as a tree, publicly declared his affection for Jeanne. After unmasking himself, before her, she as we mentioned earlier was dressed as Diana the Huntress, in reference to their encounter in the forest of Sennet. By the next month, Jeanne was the king's mistress, installed at Versailles in an apartment directly above his. On the 7th of May, the official separation between her and her husband was pronounced. To be presented at court, she required a title. The king purchased the Marquise Eight of Pompadour on the 24th of June and gave the estate, with title and coat of arms, to Jeanne Antoinette, making her Marquise de Pompadour. Through her position as court favorite Pompadour wielded considerable power and influence, she elevated her position fast and by 1756 she was lady-in-waiting to the queen, the most noble rank possible for a woman at court. Pompadour effectively played the role of prime minister, becoming responsible for appointing advancements, favors, and dismissals, and contributing in domestic and foreign politics. Her importance was such that she was approached in 1755 by Wenzel Anton, a prominent Austrian diplomat, asking her to intervene in the negotiations which led to the Treaty of Versailles. This was the beginning of the diplomatic revolution, which saw France allied to her former enemy Austria. Under these changed alliances, the European powers entered the Seven Years' War, which saw France, Austria, and Russia pitted against Britain and Prussia. France suffered a defeat at the hands of the Prussians in the Battle of Rossbach in 1757, 
and eventually lost her American colonies to the British. France emerged from the war diminished and virtually bankrupt. Now, although these actions were a huge mistake, Pompadour made some good decisions as well, which are often overlooked. One example of them is that Madame de Pompadour supported great ministers like Burton and Macaut who introduced important fiscal and economic reforms, trade, infrastructure, income taxes, which made France the richest nation in the world. Now, one less known fact about Madame de Pompadour is that she was the king's mistress only from 1745 until 1751. But this didn't change her life, because she stayed with the king until her death in 1764. The only change was her role from that of mistress to that of confidant. But what was her secret to stay in power for so long? Considering the fact she was a mistress for such a short time. Well, she was able to wield such influence due to the invaluable role she played as a friend and confidant of the king. In opposition to previous mistresses of Louis XV, Pompadour made herself invaluable to the king by becoming the only person whom Louis trusted and who could be counted on to tell him the truth. Pompadour was an indispensable comfort to Louis who was prone to melancholy and boredom. She alone was able to captivate and amuse him, and would entertain Louis with elegant parties, afternoons of hunting, and journeying among their various real estate holdings. With that being said the king kept sexual relationships with other women, he even established a house for this purpose particularly, called the Stag Park. In terms of this, Pompadour stated, it is his heart I want. All these little girls with no education will not take it from me. In comparison to Anne Boleyn, who won her powerful position through passion, and lost it as we all know fast and in a very grim circumstances, Pompadour built a relationship with the king above the physical level, she managed to get under his skin and in this way she became the most powerful woman in France at that time. Thank you for watching. See you next Friday.